Hi, in this session we're going to be looking at memory management, specifically manual reference counting. That's the old style of memory management before automatic reference counting. Let's look at a couple locations where memory can be stored. Now we're talking about the stack and the heap. Now the stack is very fast. However, it can only store static sized memory. And so what we're looking at are the data types like int, float, and char. We're also looking at functions, methods. We're also looking at blocks, which we covered in a previous session. And we're looking at structures. Now, the very nature of the stack, when you enter a new function, it pushes all the memory required for that function onto the stack. When you leave the function, it pops it off and disposes of it automatically. So it's not the kind of memory that we have to worry about. So let's look at the heap. So the heap is dynamic. It can store variable size memory. It's specifically referenced memory. So we're looking at any of the types that use the star or asterisk for to reference. Now this includes and a string. It also includes arrays and it includes instances of a class like the person class. This is the kind of memory that we have to worry about. So we have to allocate and release this kind of memory. So let's take a look at the person class that we had from before. It's pretty much the same as it was before. We've got four properties, age, name, height, gender. We've got init with name, which takes all the, pr the properties. Get gender, which uh, helped outputting it, made it a little cleaner. And we have implemented an overriding description. And we are deallocating. And this is the one we haven't, haven't looked at before. Now, code folding, as you can see, it's folded here. You use command, option, shift, left and right to fold everything. If you uh, click on the side, you'll also unfold it or fold it. Now, in here, to deallocate, we have to deallocate all of the different kind of memory that we used in this instance. So we are now responsible, since we're using the uh, manual reference counting, to allocate and deallocate all memory. So we have to deallocate the name since it's NS string. All the rest are um, the stack types. We also have to call super deallocate. And we are also outputting this just to see when it happens, just for testing purposes. So let's go back to main, main.m, add an import. We'll add an import to person.h. There we go. And let's create a person. So we'll declare pointer p is equal to, now we have to allocate it, alloc. And now we have to init with name. And we'll use the same girl we were using before, Jane. Make her 33 again. Make her 5 foot 4. And we'll give her, make her female. And let's output this. And use the percent at p. We've already got the describe, so that should work. And let's run this. And we are outputting it, so it worked, but there is a problem. Now, we declared the, uh, the variable, we allocated, we initialized, we used it, but we didn't release it. So after this point, if we had a very memory intensive program, we would be using a lot of memory and we would not be able to use person P right to the end. So a good practice is to release it after we're done using it. And so we can just call P release and that will release the memory or schedule it to be released and uh, it'll clear up that memory so we'll be able to use it later on in the program. Basically when we look at any pointer type, any reference type, it also stores another piece of information. And What this is called is the retain count. When alloc is called, it increments the retain count by one, meaning that it's to be kept. Whenever the retain count gets to zero, then it's scheduled to be released and to be deallocated. 
there's two things that will increment it. One is the alloc, and the other one is the retain. If we look at this here, there's another method of releasing. And if we go to the end here, if we do an auto release, you may have noticed this block right here, the auto release pool. This block, if any variables have been declared auto release, will decrease the retain count by one automatically. So we've incremented by one, person P has a retain count of one, but his schedule is auto released. So when it hits the end of this, it'll be decremented by one, it'll hit zero, and then it'll be scheduled to be collected by the garbage collector. Now, we can run into a problem, however, if we also have call to release it. So let's try running this and see what happens. Ah, and we get a bad access. So we've tried to release it twice, and this will create a problem. And so we don't want to try to do that twice. I'm just going to stop that, go back to main.m. There we go. And so we have to watch very carefully how many times we release something. So we can't do that. However, right now we have this declared in this block, so person does not exist outside of it. Let's try something different here. I'm just going to replace that with a P, and I'll drag the declaration outside of here. There we go. So now, person P exists beyond this block, however it's released at the end of this. Now, if we wanted to use it after here and guarantee that it would be around, what we would want to do is we would want to call retain. And that increments the retain count by one, so it's at two. When it hits the end of this block, it'll go down to one, and it will be passed here. So then we could use it after here. And so we can put this here. But we also have to, after we're done with it, we have to do a release. And that'll reduce it back to zero, and it will be claimed again. So there's one more thing that we want to look at. Let's take a look in person.h, and we want to look at the property here. Now, we've declared it non-atomic, and uh, I believe we did that in the previous session when we were uh, adding the setter. If it's atomic, it is thread safe automatically. If it's non-atomic, it's only safe for one thread to access it at a time. And I've set this so we don't get the warning in the other one. We're going to go to person.m and we're going to create another setter. We're going to create a setter for the name. And so we'll have set name. That's good. And let's create the setter. So we'll say name is equal to m. Good. Now this is all we really have to do for a setter usually. However, this creates two problems here for memory management. The first one is name was pointing to a memory location before. It had an NS string that was pointing to in memory. As soon as we set it to the new value, it's no longer pointing to it, but we haven't released it. So there's another memory leak. And the other problem is that this new value that's coming in, the N, we don't know whether it's going to stay there. It's probably set to auto-release, and if we don't watch it very carefully, it might be released before we finished using it. So there's two things we have to do here. One is we have to retain it. We have to become the owners of n, or we have to copy it. The other thing we have to do is we have to release the previous name. And so there we go. So now we're retaining n, so we become the owners. We're releasing the old name, and then we set it. So that's good. Basically, we've looked at memory management, the old style. We've looked at releasing, auto-releasing, retaining, uh, the proper way of doing a set for a variable, and we've looked at possible errors if we release too many times. So in the next session, we're going to look at automatic reference counting. Thanks for watching.